Today's session is all about straddle mobility and then straddle planche progression. How you can train them and combine them and it's what I'm training today. Now to warm the hips up and get the body ready to start going into the straddle position, I'm a big fan of using the Cossack squat. So feet a little bit wider than shoulder position. I'm just going to bend one knee, I'm going to keep the other leg straight, I'm going to keep this foot flat on the floor, come back up, do the same on the other side. So sinking as deep as I can, like a standard body weight squat here, keeping the torso upright, I'm trying to keep this shoulder behind this knee. This foot is pushed down into the floor, this leg is dead straight. Over to the other side, back down, sink into that squat position, same thing, try and keep this shoulder behind the knee. And what you should notice is every repetition, you can get down a little bit deeper. Just be careful that you're not leaning forwards and you're sinking down. For the planche, I'm using P-bars today and I've turned the P-bars out, so I've got external rotation. If you're doing the hands, exactly the same thing. Index finger at least pointing forwards. I'd even go a little bit beyond that and hands a little bit wider than shoulders. I'm gonna push it up into protraction. Notice my shoulders are actually behind my hands now. And then I'm gonna rock forwards, push up and away, and back again. Now if that feels okay, I'm gonna also go up onto my toes, push up and away, come back again. And then just every repetition, spend a little bit more time in that protraction, pushing away, making sure the arms are dead straight. And if the wrists and shoulders and everything feel good, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Push up to protraction, turn the toes over, and then drop the hip a little bit more trying to make a straight line between the feet and the shoulder or feet and the scapular position that's rounded and just do a hold here, so like a planche lean. Not to, not winding it up too much because I'm thinking about holding time. You can hear that my voice has changed because my abs are on with my glutes to create that straight line and it's a little bit hard to hold protraction while leaning forwards and holding a conversation. Next, I'm gonna do a standing straddle good morning. So feet are nice and wide again, like they were for the Cossack squat. I'm gonna take the hips backwards and the head down towards the floor. So it's easier to see from the side. So in that wide foot position, that wide straddle split, I'm then gonna have open hips. This is closed hip, so open hip to start with. And I'm gonna drive the hips backwards. Now this is gonna wind up the hamstrings and the adductors, and then I'm just gonna open back up again. I'm gonna play around with the foot position until I get comfortable there. And then exactly the same, go a little bit deeper, trying to keep the back flat as I go up and down. Now, if you are a little bit more flexible here, you can try and touch cap to the floor. If you can do cap, turn the hat around, see if you can get forehead to the floor, but just make sure with this one that you are fully coming up at the top, opening the hip. If you're more flexible, you might get stuck at the bottom in this position. We wanna make sure we can fully open the hip in that straddle. You can hold down for longer at the bottom, which is obviously going to wind everything up, and then it's going to be a little bit harder to get back out. If you're newer to it, don't worry too much about the depth. Just focus on driving the hip backwards, come down a little bit, come back up again. Video from the side so you can check your back is flat. And then you can also add a target in, something like this. So then you know I can touch there. And then every repetition, I'm going to try and take a finger away. And then that just gives you a nice way of progressing the challenge, but also assessing the movement. Next, let's actually do a planche hold. Now we have a couple of options here. We can make it easier by just going into a tuck position. So if you have a tuck planche, perfect. Make sure that's nice and strong. You're still holding protraction. The arms are dead straight. Obviously, if you can't lift the toes off yet, you might want to keep toe assist and or use a band. So toe assist is exactly the same as the tuck planche, but I just have both feet down or one foot down making sure you're still holding that protraction. I don't wanna be dumping back into the feet too much. Remember, it's toe assist, it's not toes doing the work. If you are using the band assist, that just goes around the hips, exactly the same. Knees by the chest, push up, make sure it looks exactly the same as if you were not using the band. We don't wanna be, again, hanging off the band, like overusing the toes, making it look false. It should still look like the real thing. It's just here having a little bit of assistance from the band. After a good rest, now let's look at combining those two movements. So we've got the straddle good morning. So I'm taking the hips backwards, keeping the legs straight. Notice the back is flat in that position. I'm then gonna have planche hands. So either on the P-bars or on the floor, I'm gonna come forwards. Ideally, I'm coming forwards like this. What we don't wanna do is come forwards like press handstand. I wanna be thinking about planching forwards, going into protraction and then up onto tiptoes. Now I can feel there that my hands are too close to my toes, which means it's gonna take my hips up in the air. So I need to take the feet back a little bit more or the hands a little bit further forwards. Then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Let's start again in the upright position. Drive the hips back, reach further forwards in front of me. Now when I come forwards, I can get into protraction, lean forwards, come up onto tiptoes, 
hold there. Again, that's too easy for me. So I want to increase that distance from the toes to the hands again. So I'm going to walk feet back a little bit further. Do exactly the same thing. Start with open hip, drive the hip backwards up into protraction, round up onto tiptoes. Now that's better. I can hold there. About a five second hold, come back, drive into the hamstrings, stand up, open the hip. I ideally do another repetition, exactly the same. Hold, tiptoes, back again. So with that first progression, the goal I'm aiming for is just to get up onto tiptoes. On the next set, I'm gonna try and turn over more like this and then eventually lift up into the straddle planche itself. Now again, if that feels too progressed for our current level, we can have that band assist again. I just need to get the placement correct so it's gonna be in line with the hips. And it's a little bit hard to have this in place while I stand up for the straddle mobility. But if I keep bent over in this position, drive the hip backwards, this can now be my start position. So I'm rocking into those hamstrings, getting a stretch there actively, and also into the adductors. I'm gonna hold the bars, find a position that's comfortable. Now I'm just gonna come forwards, up into protraction, up onto tiptoes with that slight toe assist. Hold for a few seconds, come back again. Okay, let's next progress to the fun stuff. So I'm gonna do some repetitions now. Where I'm gonna lift the feet for a couple of seconds, come back down, go all the way back on my straddle, do the straddle good morning, come back down and go again. So it looks like this. Now I'll first show without the band and then with the band. So drive the hips backwards, hamstrings, adductors, come forwards, round the upper back, protraction, lift the toes for a second, come back down, sink into that flexibility again, up, little rest at the top, back down, go again. And I'm gonna do three repetitions there fine-tuning the position each time. So I could keep the toe assist if that's too hard or add the band in. Now obviously the thickness of the band makes a difference and also the attachment point, the higher it is, the more help it's gonna give you. But try and prioritize protraction, so keeping that good position with the scapula, make sure you're round and all the energy's going up and forwards. But exactly the same, just with the band assist. Drive the hip back, forwards, round, up, back. A little bit longer hold. Next, I'm gonna go into straddle hold. So in the planche position, I'm gonna hold as best I can in the straddle. Now, the more closed the hip is, the higher the hips are, the easier the position is, the more open the hip is, the harder the position is. So if I do a straddle planche with my hip in this position, this is near on a full planche position, so that's really hard. If I do this, which is bringing the lever arm back in this direction, it makes it much easier. So just open up as much as you can, depending on how long you wanna hold for, and also if you're using assistance or not. Remember, you can still do the holds with your toes on the floor if you're not ready for this level yet. So let's first, I'm gonna try my best possible straddle planche without the band, doing the flexibility stretch to start with. Not bad, I'll have to check the camera afterwards. But I think that more or less was the straightish line. I nearly always take my hips too high and I often slightly bend this elbow. Never feels like it while I'm doing it, but afterwards I check the video, I always see that. So there are two things that I need to try and focus on. Now let's try with the band. This shows you how high my attachment point is. So I've got flat feet on the floor. My hand can just touch it. Both hands can just touch where it's attached to. I'm 169 centimeters, just under five foot seven. And I'm using a medium band, not the skinniest, not the thickest. Let's see what my hold is like compared to without the band. So again, let's get some flexibility work. And then into the hold. Definitely a little bit longer and I think I was a little bit more open in the hip. But let's compare them both now, you'll see the difference. Now if your priority is planche training, this is probably not the best way to train it. You'd be better off with lots of sets of around six to 10 second holds in the best position you can. So starting off in that tuck position and then slowly opening the body out. So the time would dictate the intensity, so what position you go to. Exactly the same as if I said to you do your five rep max deadlift, the five reps dictates how heavy you're gonna be able to go. If I said 20 reps, you're obviously gonna use a lot less weight. Exactly the same thing in the planche. If you hold for five seconds, it's gonna be very different than a 20 second hold. But I like this style of training if it wants to carry over to more general calisthenics and we're working things like 
handstand strength, planche to handstand, handstand to planche, press handstand, 90 degree handstand push-ups and other movements like that. This type of thing works really well and it's also quite fun. Let me know if you have any questions with this one down in the comments. If you're after coaching, check out my app or my website. Links are down in the description and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks guys.